fighting around the eastern city of Bakhmut was unrelenting. The Ukrainian military destroyed the Wagner Group and Russian artillery. Fierce fight in the streets. Until a few weeks ago, the battle was waged largely with tanks, artillery, and mortars. But Bakhmut has increasingly become a field of urban combat, with every street and building in the suburbs and surrounding villages contested. Ukrainian forces repelled 81 Russian attacks around Kapiansk, Lyman, Bahmut, Ogdivka, and Shakhtarsk over the last 24 hours, it said, adding the threat of Russian missile strikes remains high throughout Ukraine. Russian forces including fighters from the Wagner private military company have edged toward the center of the city from the east, south, and north. Ukrainian units have launched frequent counterattacks to try to reclaim some territory and preserve their precarious access to Bahamut from the west. That access has become gradually more complicated as routes into the city have come under control of Russian forces. Ukrainian soldiers on unofficial social media accounts have said they are increasingly reliant on dirt roads to reach and leave Bahamut tracks that may become impassable as the frost turns to mud. Russian aims to encircle Ukraine's troops. Rather than drive directly toward the city center, Wagner groups have sought to surround the city in a wide arc from the north. In January, the groups claimed the nearby town of Solder and have since taken a string of villages and hamlets north of Bahamut. That process appears to have gone a step further in recent days, with Wagner apparently reaching the village of Yahidni immediately to the northwest of Bahamut. The village sits on a route that, until recently, was used by Ukrainians to get in and out of the city. The next target for the Russians could be the town of Chasivyar, a straggling collection of Soviet-era apartment blocks sitting on high ground which has already been extensively damaged. Ukrainian officials said it came under artillery fire again Sunday. How long will Ukraine defend the city? The conundrum for the Ukrainian military is whether it remains feasible to continue defending Bahamut. At the beginning of February, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said, No one will surrender Bahamut. We will fight as long as we can. We consider Bahamut our fortress. More recently, in an interview with Italian media, Zelensky's tone was slightly different. It is important for us to defend Bahamut, but not at any price and not for everyone to die, he was quoted as saying. If Bahamut can no longer be held, it will be important to note where Ukrainians choose to draw their next defensive lines. The cities of Kostya Tinevka and Kramatorsk are not far to the west of Bahamut and have already registered an uptick in Russian missile attacks. For now, there is no sign of a withdrawal of Ukrainian units from the Bahamut area, and the brutal fighting wears on. The fighting around the eastern city of Bahamut was unrelenting. The Ukrainian military destroyed the Wagner Group and Russian artillery. Meanwhile, Ukraine's counteroffensive shocked Russian President Vladimir Putin into launching a partial troop mobilization late last year, according to a new assessment by the Institute for the Study of War ISW. Putin ordered the mobilization last September following months of stagnation in the war against Ukraine. 
Putin launched a special military operation on the Eastern European country on February 24, 2023, hoping for a quick victory. However, Kyiv responded with a stronger-than-expected defense effort bolstered by Western military aid that blended Russian military gains. Following months of combat, Ukraine launched its own counteroffensive last fall, retaking thousands of square miles of formerly occupied territory in the eastern part of Ukraine from Russian control, delivering a major loss to Putin. As the Kremlin continued to face growing criticism over the handling of the invasion, Ukraine's counteroffensive reportedly prompted Putin to order a decree of the partial mobilization of soldiers to the battlefield, the ISW, a US based think tank, wrote on Monday. Putin's decree saw up to 300,000 soldiers called to fight against Ukraine, but was met with some resistance as Russians sought to avoid being called to fight in the war, which has reportedly seen a high rate of troop attrition on the Russian side, Ukraine has alleged. Ukraine's sweeping counteroffensive in Darky Voblist between September 6 and September 11 likely shocked Putin into realizing that he needed to order an involuntary reserve call-up, the assessment reads. Putin declared partial mobilization shortly after the Ukrainian counteroffensives on September 21. The order came as Putin allegedly realized that irregular volunteer formations were not sufficient to defend Russian positions or conduct successful offensive operations, the ISW reported. Ahead of mobilization, the Russian leader also allegedly consulted with Kremlin-affiliated mill bloggers about his troops' position on the battlefield. These bloggers may have expressed concern over the ability of the volunteer forces to hold the front line, according to the ISW. Despite this counteroffensive, Russia's position in Ukraine remained stagnant as the war passed its one-year mark last week. The mobilization was criticized for being botched, with reports that drunk soldiers were called to the front lines in Ukraine.